I wish to read the introductory poem to Tennyson's last volume, Demeter and Other Poems. Here is the book itself. Published in 1889. This is not exactly a rare volume because the the first printing was 20,000 and Tennyson was by this time a national figure and uh, a much loved poet. In fact probably the most well-known, successful and loved poet we've had. He, he was by this time Alfred Lord Tennyson of course. As I say this is his last book. He was uh, 79 when it was published and only had a few more years to live. The first poem is to the Marquis of Dufferin and Ava. The Marquis was the Governor General of India. Tennyson's son Lionel worked in what was then the India office and the Marquis invited him out to India so that he could expand his knowledge of of the office there. Lionel went with his wife. While he was there he was taken ill. At first it was thought that uh, it was one of these things which affected people when they first went to India but he grew steadily worse and was put on a boat back to England with his wife and he died while aboard the ship and his body was sent into the sea. He was given a, a funeral at sea. Poor Tennyson was devastated by this news and he came later to write this poem. To the Marquis of Dufferin and Ava At times our Britain cannot rest, at times her steps are swift and rash, she moving at her girdle clash the golden keys of east and west. Not swift or rash, when late she lent the sceptres of her west, her east, to one that ruling has increased her greatness and her self-content. Your rule has made the people love their ruler. Your vice-regal days have added fullness to the phrase of gauntlet in the velvet glove. But since your name will grow with time, not all as honouring your fair fame of statesmen have I made the name a, go a golden portal to my rhyme. But more, that you and yours may know from me and mine how dear a debt we owed you and are owing yet to you and yours and still would owe. For he, your India, was his fate and drew him over sea to you. He fain had ranged her through and through to serve her myriads and the state. A soul that watched from earliest youth and on through many a brightening year had never swerved for craft or fear by one side path from simple truth. Who might have chased and clasped renown and caught her chaplet here, and there, in haunts of jungle-poisoned air, the flame of life went wavering down. 
But ere he left your fatal shore, and lay on that funereal boat, dying unspeakable, he wrote their kindness, and he wrote no more. And sacred is the latest word, and now the was, the might have been, and those lone rites I have not seen, and one drear sound I have not heard, are dreams that scarce will let me be, not there to bid my boy farewell, when that within the coffin fell, fell and flashed into the Red Sea, beneath a hard Arabian moon and alien stars, to question why the sons before the fathers die, not mine, and I may meet him soon. But while my life's late eve endures, nor settles into hueless grey, my memories of his briefer day will mix with love for you and yours. <coughs> As Yeats might have said, there is only one obscurity in the poem, one which I cannot understand. In the fourth stanza, Tennyson says, But since your name will grow with time, not all, as honouring your fair fame of statesman, have I made the name a, go a golden portal to my rhyme. I cannot understand the not all, but since your name will grow with time, not all. It seems perfectly superfluous, unless he meant to say will grow with time not at all, but that seems unlikely. Anyway, if anybody has any ideas on that, please let me know. Thank you. <coughs>